How to Navigate Your cPanel Dashboard, Part 2. In Part 1 of this series, we showed you how to add new users to cPanel and set their privileges. We also walked you through creating new domains and subdomains. You'll find the link to that video in the description below. Now, let's move on to looking at one-click installs. In your cPanel dashboard, scroll down to Software and click Installatron Applications Installer. Installatron is a state-of-the-art auto-installer. It integrates seamlessly with your desktop, enabling one-click installs and upgrades, backups and restores, among other advanced features. Now, once you're in the Installatron page, go to the Applications Manager, top right. This opens to a list of applications which are available for immediate one-click installation. Have a look around. You'll see apps for community building, content management, e-commerce and statistics among others. Now, let's look at FTP and file management for viewing and editing your files and folders. Head back to your home page and select File Manager, which will be at the top. Here you'll find a list of mostly auto-generated files. cPanel File Manager gives you useful options to quickly manage your files within the cPanel interface. It's easy to use and it removes the hassle of using FTP. You can create, upload, modify or remove files from this interface. For instance, after installing WordPress with Installatron, the auto-generated files will be within your public HTML folder. Here, you'll see your WordPress website domain name as the folder name. Click into here to view the files. Once in here, you can view your WordPress content folder to manually upload plugins and themes, for example. Alternatively, you can upload assets through FTP by setting up an FTP account. FTP is short for File Transfer Protocol, and as the name suggests, it's software which transfers files between computers. To set up your FTP account, you go back to the cPanel dashboard and look for FTP Accounts, which shouldn't be far from the file manager you were just in. In here, you can add a new FTP account or search for existing ones. It's a fairly straightforward process. Now, let's move on to managing email addresses. Go back to your cPanel dashboard and scroll down to the email apps. Every cPanel account comes with email account hosting attached. So, go to the email accounts tab. In there, you can manage your existing emails or you can create new ones. You can also forward emails by going to the forwarders tab. This sends emails from your domain to a range of other email addresses to make sure the emails get to the right people in your business. Or you can set it to forward all emails from one domain to another. Also, if you go back to the dashboard, you can select autoresponders. Adding an autoresponder allows you to let people know that their email has been received, or you could use it to tell people when you're out of the office. Finally, for emails, you can go back to the dashboard and select Default Address to set a default address. So, if people guess an email address or accidentally add a typo, the message won't just disappear. It'll end up in here, so you can still access it. Now, let's have a quick look at PHP. As you update your WordPress site, you might find it starts to run slowly. Well, keeping your PHP version up to date can help you with this. In cPanel, click Select PHP Version. This takes you to your PHP selector. At the top, you can see your current PHP version. Simply click and select the most up-to-date version from the drop-down list. You'll see we're running version 7.3 and we need to update to 7.4. Good practice is to always double-check if your WordPress website plugins, themes or applications are compatible with this new PHP version. Using a non-supported PHP version with, let's say, a theme or a contact form may lead you to accidentally break your website. If you're using complex themes or dealing with large files on your website, your PHP options may need changing to help deal with these. Clicking on Options will show you a list of variables that you can change in order to allocate more resources to your site. But before you go making any of these big changes, we suggest you watch the next video in the series to know how to back up your website, you know, just in case. Before you go, 
Don't forget you'll find the link to part one of this series in the description below. And while you're looking at that, why not click the subscribe button and hit the little bell logo so you'll be told when part three drops.